Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and very good morning, afternoon and evening from wherever you are. Welcome to first session in the module two of uh, medical research and writing course by um, Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College, Health Sciences University and Sadiq International Virtual University. It's a pleasure to invite Professor Mulazim Hussain Bukhari to read the bio of uh, the esteemed Professor Asif Anir Sahab. Um, Over to you, sir. Bismillah Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mubashir. Iftakhar and uh, all my colleagues, I am also looking at Chima Sahab and all other peoples. Uh, basically, Dr. Uh, uh, Asif Hanif, uh, I founded him when I started the PhD program in King Edward Medical University in 2007. He was the graduate uh, uh, in medical biostats. He was the first medical biostats who graduated from the Punjab University and then he did masters and he also got admission in uh, King Edward Medical University for the MPhil program. We specially introduced one uh, specialty of MPhil in medical biostates. I think that was uh, for one or two time and it was not approved from the academic council. And then Dr. Uh, uh, Asif Hanif did the MPhil and he also passed the PhD uh, from uh, Sri Lanka and uh, he also visited Japan and so many other countries. He has a lot of credentials. I think uh, when we started the PhD program in King, King Edward Medical University, uh, he was included in our um, team, teaching team. And today, inshallah, you will enjoy uh, descriptive uh, medical biostats. I have changed, uh, I have requested Dr. Mubashir Eftakhar to include two lectures because today is the basis of the medical bias. Because without today's lecture, we cannot understand the analytical uh, bias states. Now, I think if, over to you. And one more thing is that if you want to ask the question, you can ask uh, in the chat box and also in question and answer set. Even you can ask uh, some other uh, a question uh, in our groups. After this uh, lecture, after this lecture, I will share some of videos of uh, Dr. Uh, Asif Anif also um, with me in my uh, library. Dr. Asif Anif also traveled from here to Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College, Muzaffarabad, for me, and uh, he uh, gave almost one week presentation to my teachers, to my professors on the medical biostates. Nowadays, currently. Dr. Uh, Asif Anif is working as the head of the Department of uh, Biostate, Medical Biostates uh, in University of Lahore. Thank you, Dr. Mubashir. Uh, over to you, Professor Asif Anif. Thank you, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this platform. I am always grateful to Professor Dr. Nasim Hussain Bukhari for his generosity. He always introduced wherever he is and invite me for the lectures of research writing and biostatistics. Uh, today we will discuss a few part of descriptive biostatistics. As earlier, I came to know that I will deliver the talk on hypothesis testing and uh, selection of statistical tests later. Uh, I was honored to give this part as well uh, because uh, without uh, understanding of descriptive biostatistics and the baseline information and knowledge, uh, it was not uh, easy to understand the hypothesis test and statistical test. Uh, thank you very much for uh, introducing me, sir. Uh, I am currently working as professor of biostatistics at the uh, University Institute of Public Health Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Lahore. I am Director Research Section of uh, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Director Biostatistics Unit that was founded in Faculty of Allied Health Sciences in 2018. I'm Managing Director of Statistical Consultancy and Training Center where we offer short courses and uh, training to our medical students. Uh, my scientific research publications, Alhamdulillah, uh, recently 
uh, approach to 300 and uh, the citation of uh, those articles is more than 6000 actually uh, uh, i i am uh, first of all uh, i have uh, planned to tell you about uh, the basics tips and basic ideas of biostatistics to learn the advanced biostatistics inshallah you will get, get understanding of basics of these things short overview of data analysis using uh, SPSS. However, I will not demonstrate here uh, about the usage of uh, statistical package for social sciences or SPSS. I, will, I have added few screenshot to analyze your data according to your objective. Uh, inshallah, introducing few tips and uh, summarize uh, things in understanding uh, in understandable way and uh, will try to make you able to plan and write your analysis based on your objective. Being a medical doctor, we always face and we always, uh, specifically, I always listen from the medical community that uh, tell me, professor, which statistical test is uh, uh, be, will be used in my research and in according to my objective. I always encourage medical students and medical researchers uh, outline your objective, outline the type of your data, and uh, see the things you will be able to select the statistical analysis plan. So in your- uh, uh, Sorry, sir, uh, Professor Sub, can you adjust your mic? Because there uh, is some aberration in the voice, yeah. Okay, is it fine now? Yeah, it's better. Even a little loud, speak a little loud, I think. Okay, okay, I will. Okay, uh, what do you understand uh, with, the, with the word of biostatistics? As you, most of uh, you may be from the field of health sciences or from the biological sciences, and uh, statistics is a discipline that deals with uh, facts and figures and deal with numerical, deal with data, deal with information related to uh, the data. So bio mean life, as you everyone know, and the statistics mean facts and figures. So all the facts and figures related to uh, health sciences or bio is actually the biostatistics. In other terms, biostatistics is an application. Biostatistics is the utilization of uh, statistical tools, statistical dif uh, uh, discipline to handle health related data. In your daily routine, in whenever you are at hospital or when you are, uh, you are at your clinical setting, you always deal with the data, you always de deal with the information. For example, patient come to you and you start asking uh, about the sign and symptoms, about the risk factors, about the basic thing that may cause the disease, then you make a plan and after making the plan, you uh, diagnose and advise the patient, then you follow, and then you uh, get the reading again and again to uh, to make uh, to stick on the same plan or to make the other plan. So uh, the things are very clear about the biostatistics. These are uh, the things that usually uh, you use usually in your daily routine. There are a few types of biostatistics like uh, descriptive and inferential biostatistics. In uh, descriptive statistics, we take the help of graph, table, and numbers. And in inferential statistics, it always deal with the different type of hypothesis testing. That will uh, that is not basically the part of today's talk. I will cover mostly the descriptive statistics. First of all, you must have to know about how biostatistics works. Look at uh, our daily routines. Whenever we are uh, uh, dealing with our patients, when we are dealing dealing with our community dealing with our discipline, dealing with the society, we mostly plan and execute. Uh, according to uh, uh, nature, only two things happen. One is according to plan and planning, and one is accidental or haphazard. We are not talking about accidental and haphazard thing today. We will talk about the things that we plan and that there are chances of uncertainties. The biostatistics, always deal, your statistical sciences always deal with the uncertainties. So we will start to start from the planning. And then whenever you plan the things, you collect the information, you collect the data. For example, you were planning to start this course. And uh, once you planned to take this course, you might have collected many information, few information regarding the fee structure, regarding the 
lecture plan regarding the faculty. And uh, once you collect the data, you process the data and you organize the data. So in your uh, health related uh, projects or health related uh, uh, planning, uh, once you plan the things you need to collect the data and then organize in a way to understand in better way. So next step is actually a very important phase of uh, data analysis uh, that is summarization of data. Once you plan, you collect the information, you organize the information, then you uh, go for the summarization of the data. And uh, once you summarize, you analyze it, you make the conclusion, you implement the things to change the policy, to enhance the policy or, or to make the new plans. So all these things when come together, it becomes biostatistics. It is very simple. You always have to make a plan, go to the, uh, go to the literature and find the uh, information related to your planning, then organize the things. Maybe you here, here you may need to uh, put this information into Performa, into audio, into video tools, so that you can enter these information into some software and you analyze and draw the conclusion on the basis of your objective. So here are some important concepts before going to the advancement, advanced concepts of biostatistics. The few, con, uh, few contents uh, are related to variables. Uh, what is variable? Variable is actually a characteristics that varies from individual to individual or subject to subject. For example, you are working uh, uh, in emergency. Uh, there you face a uh, few patients regarding, uh, let's suppose, viral infection. So all the viral infection, uh, all the patient having viral infection may have different picture of their uh, uh, blood profile or blood testing. So every patient has different age. Every patient may have different gender. Every patient may have different body mass index. So these characteristics are able to vary from individual to individual. That's why they are called variables. And uh, a few times, there is, if there is no variability, they are called constant. And in uh, medical research or in biostatistics, there are very few constants uh, that uh, we face in our daily routine. For example, if you are working on prostate cancer, or if you are working on, let's suppose, ovarian cancer, here gender is a constant. You do not need to analyze this uh, phenomena because you have already taken a population with, uh, uh, with a specific gender where the disease is common. So there are a few types of uh, variables. One is independent, dependent variable, and confounding variable. If you talk about the variables, so you need to make the list of independent and dependent variable while you are planning, while you are going to collect the data. Uh, you have to see what outcome you are going to measure. That outcome is usually a dependent variable. And that outcome or that variable that based on other different characteristics or variable is called independent variable. You cannot change or modify the independent variable, but you can change or modify the dependent variable. Here is the, uh, the example of independent variable like age. You cannot modify the age. If we talk about the body mass index, you can modify the body mass index with some intervention. Uh, independent variable is used to describe or measure the factor that assume to cause or at least to influence the problem. They are the basic influencer to cause the problem. And dependent variable are those though which are modified under the influence of some other variables which are called independent variable. Confounding variable as it seems from its name confound con that make uh, the relationship confused between independent and dependent variable. For example, if uh, I give uh, example of uh, age, uh, weight, and uh, uh, let's suppose uh, body mass index. As the age is increasing, body mass index is also increasing. But as the weight is increasing, body mass still increase. So here, uh, the variable age that has an influence of both independent and dependent variable uh, is confounding variable. You can see the uh, graphical presentation of uh, these type of variable. If uh, there is a, there are few factors that can cause the 
disease or that can cause the uh, uh, that can cause the factor these are the independent variable and the outcome of these variables or the effect of these variable is called dependent variable so here is an other variable that confuses the relationship between these two for example this is age the confounding variable is age let's suppose this is height let's suppose this is body mass index uh, you can see the body mass index depends on height and this height and body mass index also depends on age so age is confounding variable here if you are planning to study any relationship between height and body mass index you have to deal with the age first for example if you want to develop a relationship between height and body mass index you have to take some specific population there in which the age cannot play a confounding role for example you can do this study in adult population in pediatric population in obese population uh, in diabetic population uh, with specific age so that you can control the effect of third variable on both independent and dependent variable one more important concept is regarding data and its type we always deal with data but we confuse with data we do not actually consider the basic uh, uh, basic concept to differentiate the types of data for example uh, i usually ask i usually ask for example i usually ask uh, if there are 43 male and 27 female in a class which kind of data it is people say students say this is quantitative data because they see there is 43 and 27 so this 43 and 27 is actually the presentation of data we always present our data in form of number you have to see what you are actually measuring if you are measuring a quantity like age if you are measuring uh, uh, quality like blood group or gender so this is categorical or qualitative data so there are two types of uh, data that is qualitative data and quantitative data qualitative that is not based on numbers qualitative data that is beyond the numbers that comes in facts for example blood group ethnicity anemia anemic status disease status they all are characteristics they are not measured in number if you measure the characteristics in number for example hb level es esr level sleeping hour number of cup of tea consumed by obese people all these things are in number so these if these things are in number it is quantitative data this quantitative data may be of two types one is discrete data other is continuous data sometime we see our quantitative data may be taken in form of decimals and sometime it may not be taken in form of decimal let's suppose uh, if i say if someone asks us how many brothers and sisters you are we always say 4 5 2 1 we never say 4.5 we never say 4.6 in same same way if you see the pulse rate of a patient heart rate of a patient you cannot present it in form of decimals so if you can present your numerical data in decimal it is continuous data let's uh, for example hb can be presented in decimal height can be presented in decimal but number of people sitting in a room cannot be presented in form of decimal if you can present it in each and every possible decimal between two number it is continuous data if you cannot present in form of each and every decimal between two number this is discrete data so these discrete data and uh, uh, so this quantitative and qualitative data have their own measurement scale like nominal scale when the variable is when the variable is differentiated by its quality by its characteristics by its name by its distinct distinctiveness it is called nominal and if there is a natural order if you ask your patient do you have pain the patient will say yes or no if you ask how much pain how much uh, uh, pain is there will be severity of pain like mild moderate severe if you see there is a tumor benign or malignant 
if tumor is benign and malignant it is nominal if you see the grade of tumor grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 this is actually the ordinal scale uh, here is another scale that is called interval uh, just think how much data you present in form of zero where zero shows presence can you say uh, the age of my friend is zero can you say the height of this lamp is zero no you cannot say can you say the if, if it is existing if it is living the uh, for example the blood parameters are zero no you cannot say but we cannot say today's temperature is zero. we can express today's temperature is zero for example you are talking about about room temperature it can be zero when you can present you it is interval scale when you show your data as zero and it shows absence it is ratio scale most of the time in medical in medical statistics or in medical research we deal with ratio scale in quantitative and we deal with nominal and ordinal where the things are qualitative so scale mean quantitative here if the data is qualitative it may be of nominal and ordinal if the data is quantitative it may be interval and ratio scale so why we collect data why we need to collect data being a health practitioner being a health scientist why you need to see all these facts and figures and play with the numbers There are no to see the spectrum of a specific disease that is not present pre present uh, uh, commonly in your community you have to collect data so that you can see the spectrum and the clinical characteristics of the disease to get the evidence about the hypothesis in your mind to get the evidence that is uh, being practiced and that is uh, not being practiced to identify the gap in knowledge one of the most important aspect why we collect data is to identify the gap in knowledge. For example, you have read somewhere, there is a relationship between, let's suppose, frozen shoulder and ischemic heart disease. For, to prove this hypothesis, to prove this question, the, the, uh, the, uh, the relationship between ischemic heart disease and the frozen shoulder, you have to collect the data. You have to provide the evidence to prove this hypothesis, to cope with novel health challenges as there was COVID. Everyone was collecting the data regarding the sign and symptoms, regarding the uh, uh, clinical presentation, regarding the diagnostic efficacies, regarding the treatment efficacies, regarding the follow-up. And uh, there was a there was lot of data that was collected to uh, cope with the novel health challenges, to improve preventive and diagnostic techniques. Definitely, when you, uh, uh, when you see uh, there are some challenges in prevention and diagnosing the thing. You collect data you, uh, to test the product, to test the new developed method of diagnosis and prevent the disease. Definitely, you collect the data to reduce disease burden. So that whenever uh, there, is a, uh, there is evidence from the data, the disease is increasing, you make the policy. You make uh, the things uh, in order to control or reduce the disease. There are many other things that can be in your mind while you collect the data. So data can be presented in form of graph, table, and summary measures. Let me recall you, we have started descriptive, des uh, descriptive biostatistics. And biostatistics mean the facts and figures related to life, related to biological data, related to health science data, and uh, in the few concepts, we have studied the type of data. What is data? Data type, there were two types of data, quantitative and qualitative or categorical. Uh, qualitative data can be measured in form of nominal and ordinal. Quantitative data may be of discrete and continuous. Continuous data is a type of data that passes through each and every possible point decimal between two numbers while discrete data comes in form of jumping. For example, uh, as I gave the example, number of brothers and sisters, pulse rate, heart rate, and if you are measuring 
a characteristics that can be presented in form of each and every possible decimal between two numbers that is quantitative data. Qualitative data can be measured in form of nominal and ordinal, while quantitative data can be measured in form of ratio and scale. So if you have collected the data, your if your student have collected the data, if you have collected the data, you or your supervisor, you may ask your student, you may ask your research assistant, you have collected the lot of data, can you show me this data? What he will do? What if he put all the thousand questionnaires and performers in front of you and see, professor, look, I have collected the data, you see, and give the information. Is it possible for you people to see and look the thousand performers to generate any underlying information? Is it possible for you to understand what is the meaning of data? No, definitely you cannot understand the meaning of the collected data. You have to present your data in a meaningful way. Those meaningful ways are graph, tables, and summary measures commonly used as mean, median, and mode. Uh, graphical presentation is actually a kind of chart where data plotted as variable across the coordinate. Graphical representation of data is attractive method of showcasing number data that help in analyzing and pre present it in quantitative or qualitative visual. Common uses of graphs are visual representation. It attract you and your audience about the information. Visual representation means it is good to understand and attract it. Graphical presentation is used to check the assumption of the data. For example, using the data, you can check the normality of data. There are different behaviors of the data. For example, different behavior means data may be normal, data may not be normal. I will show you a few examples later, what is the normality? What normality mean is. So normality can be checked through few graphs and it help in selection of statistical tools. Have you ever listened that graphs can help you to select the statistical tools? Graphs can guide you whether to apply t-test or ANOVA, whether to apply man whitney u test, parametric test or non-parametric test. So you need to you need to understand the graph and these graphs will help you in selection of statistical tests. I will tell you later. There are, common, there are common types of graph. If you can see, the circular graph is pi diagram. The next one is simple bar diagram, multiple bar diagram and subdivided bar diagram, histogram, scatter plot, box plot. So all these graphs are used to make your data sensible, to make your data informative. But there is an issue, which graph can be used for your objective? I really desire you, everyone must know if you have an objective, if you collected the data, you decide yourself which graph is applicable to you. Let's suppose pi diagram. If you see there are slices and if there are few categories, like if there are two categories or three categories, I always say when there are less categories, you apply a pie chart. If there are more categories or the data is discrete, you go for simple bar chart. Dr. Asif, <clears throat> how much mean can you limit uh, some numbers of the data? One, two, three, four, five, uh, and uh, five down. Uh, for Thank example, uh, for example, if there are uh, if there are five categories, and if we make pie chart for five categories, there Thank will you. be loss of information. The data being lost, the information being lost as the slice becomes smaller and smaller. Uh, uh, for me, if there are more than three or four categories, we should prefer bar chart. If there are two, three, four categories, and if the slices are not being smaller and smaller, you can use 
pi diagram. If you have two variable to present at the same time, you may use multiple part diagram. If you see in the previous slide, there was pi, pi diagram and there was only one variable that was status of bar, free term or full term bar. Then there were simple bar chart. The caption was gestational age at time of delivery, extremely preterm, very preterm, moderate, and full term. You can see there was only one variable. If this preterm status need to be, if this preterm status need to be elaborated with respect to location, with respect to city, there are two variables now, then we will move for multiple bar diagram. If you see from Punjab, then KPK and Balochistan, there are four province, major four provinces in Pakistan, and the data was collected from these four provinces. You can see the rate of preterm bar. This is the original. Yes, sir, Afis, Asif, we can also compare the male and female in this way. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. We, we can compare the smoking status and gender. For example, subdivided bar diagram, what is difference? The only difference is in multiple bar diagram, the rectangles were side by side. And in subdivided bar diagram, the rectangles are ups and down. The only difference that the placement of the rectangle, the meaning of both subdivided and multiple bar diagram is same, histogram. When you need to see the behavior of your data, have you ever listened it before behavior of data? We have, so we have listened behavior of human, behavior of nature. Yes, there is behavior of data. Uh, I deliver a talk usually on behavior of data that check the normality and the other things. I will give little bit touch to understand the behavior of data. The behavior of data when the data is presented by the central value, by the central value and how the data is scattered around its mean or the central value. If you see this histogram, there is a bell shape. This bell shape tells you the distribution of data. If this is accurate bell shape, the data is considered to be normal. If the data is of skewness, for example, if the tail is long at positive side, this is positive skewed, this data is not normal. If you see, if your data behave like this, for example, the tail is long on left side. This is. Dr. Asif, can you define uh, normal? What is the normal data? Can you. Normal, normal data is data that has equal distribution around the mean. For example, if we take data like uh, ages and yes. uh, the mean age is 23 years, and if the people are equally distributed below and above 23, it is called normal data. If you see this bell shape, at this peak point, this is the mean. At this peak point, this is the mean. If you see on the left and right side, the data is equally distributed. And on this, the data is more on left uh, right side. And here, the data is more on left side. So when there is left and right side distribution around the mean, it is called skewed data. If the tail is prolonged on right side, it is positive skewed. If the tail is on left side, it is called negative skew. You can see, I will tell you in a summary slide, histogram is used for quantitative Dr. Asif, data. Can you once again uh, explain what is the negative skewed and what is the positive skewed? Okay, when, you? Most of the, when most of the data is on the right side of its mean, it is positive skew. When most of the data is on the left side of its mean, it is negative data. Negative skew. I have few uh, example in uh, coming slides. Uh, it will be uh, clear, inshallah. Uh, and in scatter plot, uh, sorry, histogram is used for quantitative data when we need to visually see the normality of data, the debt behavior of data. The scatter plot, it is actually based on y axis and x axis independent and dependent variable. If you see, gestation age at time of delivery and neonatal weight. Uh, you, all being, you all being health care provider, you know that neonatal weight depends on the gestation age. And if 
if there is a relationship between if if you want to see the relationship between dependent and independent variable you may need to plot the scatter plot if if the line is like this shown in the graph as well if it is from lower to upper side this is positive skewed or oh, sorry positive relationship positive relationship mean if one variable is increasing other is also increasing if one variable is decreasing other is also decreasing the example is if the temperature is increasing the consumption of ice cream is also increasing if the temperature is decreasing the consumption of ice cream is also decreasing so this is actually when both variables moves in the same direction it is positively related or we can say the correlation or relationship is positive if you ever found the pattern of scatter plot like this from upside to downside it is negative skewed in this situation if one variable is increasing the other is decreasing let's suppose if the uh, if the body mass mass index is increasing or the quality of life is decreasing if the temperature is increasing the consumption of tea is decreasing you can say one variable is increasing other is decreasing it is negative relationship if there is no trend many times we see when we collect data there is no trend for example uh, uh, it may be like this you see this is not linear relationship this was linear relationship linear positive linear when there is straight line linear positive relation linear negative relationship non linear relationship can be explained uh, is explained sorry by this graph when the line is not straight so so far we have studied pie chart when you have categorical variable and when there is there are less categories we use pie diagram for simple pie diagram it is used for discrete data and for categorical data when the categories are more for multiple and subdivided diagram we present two variable at the same time histogram is used for quantitative data when we need to check the normality scatter plot is used to check the relationship between independent and dependent variable here is box plot that is also used for quantitative data to check the outlier outlier is an extreme value that may live under or over the normal values for example if you ask your student to measure the weight of nursery class student and your student didn't understand it well he or she went to nursery class student he started measuring the weight 12 kg 13 kg 14 kg 17 kg 16 kg so on he mistakenly took the weight of teacher 78 kg look most of the observations were taken from the student of kg class the weight were the weights were in kg from 12 to 17 but one weight of madam of her teacher was not related to the rest of the data and it was placed over the normal data it is called outlier extreme values so doctor sir what is the example of doctor sir what is the example of outlier and phd students ke yes you can elaborate sir you you elaborate it very well okay okay continue it sir okay <laughs> once they, once we are teaching the students of the phd classes and first it was the first batch uh, in king edward medical university and we taught almost uh, 90% of the classes and dr asif anif was at this point of outlier suddenly uh, one of the um, students immediately entered inside and uh, the some of the student in uh, class asked dr asif is it now outlier yes it is out it is outlier because if you assess the uh, element of uh, education level and people sitting already and in this then if we compare it it will be the outlier thank you so much yes the outlier is always uh, should always be considered when you need to analyze your quantitative data and uh, if there is an outlier what 
we say oh my data is not good i say your data is good you have to treat your data finding the outlier is actually the diagnosis when you diagnose the thing you treat the thing when you diagnose the patient you treat the patient and when i diagnose the data i should treat the data there are many things which can be used in the presence of this outlier i'll tell you after you why normal qq and pp plot is used to check the normality of data like this we see histogram in same manner if these dots are on the line that is on 45 degree the data is normal if it is not around the line on the line the data is not normal so it was a tip how we can calculate these pie chart bar chart multiple bar chart scatter bar uh, scatter plot and many other plots if you go to spss go to graph legacy dialog and here is the charts you can use so if you have already entered data in spss you can use these commands spss will follow you it will obey your order and will calculate whatever you say so we say that spss is good to analyze the data but i always say that you should be good to utilize the spss tool for the uh, 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 exact data analysis for related data analysis if you will say to spss please calculate please make pie chart for age for bmi it will make but there will be no information of this data that was age and you made the pie chart for relevant data analysis technique uh, tips i have made a summary for you people you can use pie chart for qualitative data ideally with the less categories bar chart qualitative data ideally when more categories and for discrete data as well for example in your research project you ask a question number of household number of people living in the same house for example your project was on tuberculosis and you ask them how many people live in the same house this number of people is discrete data because you cannot express the number of people living in the same house in decimal for this you may need to present this data in bar chart multiple or subdivided bar chart qualitative with multi way multi way me when there are qualitative versus qualitative gender versus smoking vaccination status versus polio mellitus and so on histogram can be used for quantitative data especially for continuous data scatter diagram to see the relationship of two quantitative data box plot to see the outlier in quantitative data so you can keep this this slide with you and whenever you want to analyze your data you first see which kind of data it is and what is your purpose to analyze the data so the other part was tabulation data can be presented in form of graphical tabulation and summary measure we have seen so far tabulation doctor is, can you um, exercise uh, one each each one uh, on yes sir i will give exercise uh, at the end of these slides i have a few uh, class work if i uh, say this is class work thank you sir and uh, i have few questions at the end of this slide and i, I will also give a quiz sir inshallah uh, tabulation is a systematic presentation of data classified under a suitable heads and subheads if you see there are heads and subheads there are headings and there are subheadings placed in different rows and columns if you see there are different rows and columns this sort of logical arrangement makes the data easy to understand facilitate comparison provides an effective way to convey information to a reader let's suppose again take the same example if you are asked to collect data from 100 people regarding their lifestyle lifestyle and their quality of life their experience for example data from healthcare provider providers about their experience regarding covid so you cannot understand the data until 
unless it is presented in a good way if you make the graph it be, it is good to understand if you make the table it is good to understand if you make one way table it means there is only one variable involved if you make two way table it means there are two variables involved for example this eight is frequency of children with hirschsprung disease that is 2 to 6 months among the data of hirschsprung disease there were eight children whose age was 2 to 6 months if you see for the hirschsprung disease the most common age at presentation was less than 10 days and it is true this disease is usually to be present in early age and this is the column of percentage and this is the column of cumulative percentage we usually feel difficulty to understand the concept of cumulative percentage here is one variable that is age you can see the frequency you can see the percentage if i ask you people how many people are from 6 to 12 months you will say 8 you will say 16% 6 to 12 months if i ask how many people how many patients below 12 months having age 12 or less you directly can see the cumulative percentage cumulative percentage is actually the percentage that that tells the percentage of from that point to the below point if you see this percentage was 48 as it then in 48 this 8 was added it becomes 56 then 2 was added it became 58 then 16 was added and so on the last percentage is 100 percent if i ask you people how, how many percent of the patients having age less than 20 you can directly see the 56 or manually you can add these two things for two-way table there is two variables for example here race of the respondent and gender of the respondent what you understand by the frequency of 790 719 is representing two variables it is white female 204 is representing black population 1517 is representing whole population so if you see from the body of the text if one frequency is giving you the two information or there are, if there are two variables involved it is two variables from spss you can go to analyze descriptive statistics and just click the frequency and shift your variable on the frequency part press okay all the frequency tables you need to make will be made so far we have studied presentation of data in graph and table now it's turn of measure of central tendency or summary measures earlier i told you you can present your data in three different way graph table and number this number is actually measure of central tendency or summary measures you all are used to with these like summary measure is we wanted to see with what is the suitable single number that summarizes our data who is the best possible who is the best and ideal number that can present our data that is central tendency that is me and uh, or we usually see where our center tends to if we have the data what is the central point why we always need to see the central point because central point is the point that is representative of all the data below and above the mean we can also see the 25th percent of the data 50th percent of the data 75th percent of the data and above 75th percent of that is called the measure of location it is my summary measures that is called measure of location where the data is located you have seen uh, listen quartiles percentiles b -siles. we are not going to cover that too much i am just giving you the idea why we present data for mean why mean is used to present the data because we need a reliable number that can be representative of our data so commonly measures are mean median and mode what is the mean simple average you add up all the things divide by the number you will get the mean what is median most middle value of the data most middle value of arranged data 
mode most frequent value of the data so uh, the thing is when to use these measures when mean is uh, good to use when median is good to use when we use the mode for example suppose we have the ages of these students 23 24 21 19 mean is every, some of all the uh, data dividing by their number median is 23 and mode is also around 23 so if mean median and mode all are all are equal our data is normal here mean is 25 median is 23 mode is 23 we should have doubt that our data is not normal because all the all these three measures are not equal i'll tell you later how it can be calculated problem with mean the biggest problem with mean is an outlier as i was telling you uh, uh, at the time of uh, studying box plot i told you don't you worry if there is an outlier there are remedial measures if you have diagnosed you will you will treat it the first treatment for outlier not to use mean because mean gives equal weight to all the measures outlier can have a large influence on the computed mean value it distorts our perception about the central tendency of the measure data so if there is an outlier do not use mean but you will use median but you will use median for example for this data when there is no outlier the data was ideal here is the mean here is the median when you had an outlier for example this was an outlier you see this mean jumped from this number to this number but there was no big difference on median why because median always take middle value for example uh, short example 2 3 4 let's suppose what is the middle value 3 what is the median 3 if an extreme value 100 is added you see when you will add up all the data the mean will be too much but for median it will be between these two number 3.5 the median is not affected by 100 but mean was totally affected by 100 so when you have an outlier in your data when you are planning to analyze your quantitative data first of all look for the outlier if there is an outlier go for median if there is no outlier go for mean and if you have categorical data you can make pie chart bar chart multiple bar chart one way table two way table as per your objective if you want to use any of these measures mean is used when data has no outlier median is used when you have outlier so all these things are put together if you have nominal descriptive statistics proportion frequency table percentage and modes are used for ordinal data proportion frequency table percentage and mode are used for discrete data use frequency table percentage and mode for continuous data mean or median when there is an outlier for interval data use mean and mode you can have this picture whenever you need to analyze your data if your data is nominal mode is applicable everywhere if you have median or applicable for ordinal interval and ratio and same for mean in spss go to analyze press the frequency press the statistics here is a box select mean median mode it will be calculated is there any question so far because we have learned how the data will be presented if there is any question you can raise please or you can speak whatever the mode you are using uh, please uh, you are muted assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam uh, what is the odd value what is the odd odd, odd. You, that is another thing are you talking about odds ratio odds ratio that that, that is different odd ratio yes we will learn in next session when i will learn in next about, session yes when we we'll, uh, when i will talk about hypothesis testing that that's advanced thing. so for if you have any issue today uh, we sir now one request sir 
Yes. So one request, this is Dr. Shubha here. Uh, I, uh, can you show us uh, how to enter the data in the SPSS? Just uh, how it is entered and then how you have calculated. Just one example, so it will be really good. And uh, one of the participant, Dr. Sadia has asked, actually uh, requested uh, if you can share uh, the uh, SPSS software and so that we can also work up some of the uh, okay. like oh, 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 uh, problems. Okay. That will be really good. Okay, you can request uh, Professor Malazam Bukhari Saab and uh, Edmund. They may arrange one session on SPSS. I'm available because uh, yes, today it was all about descriptive statistics. And I just yes, sir, yes, sir. these images in order to help you people if you ever use SPSS or you are yes, going sir. to use SPSS, it will be. Yes, uh, that will be really good, yes, sir. That yes, will be really we, we can have. And uh, one, more, uh, one more question, sir, actually. Uh, regarding uh, uh, what is the difference between correlation and association? Uh, I, will, uh, I will tell in uh, uh, hypothesis testing, but the simple difference for, uh, when we say correlation, it means both variables are quantitative. If I say association, okay. both variables should be quantitative. If you are testing two qualitative variables, it's association. If you have two quantitative variables, it's correlation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Most of the Thank questions you. are related uh, with our next coming session. Next and session. hopefully, uh, we will arrange another session in between this session on your demand uh, for the SPSS, uh, inshallah. Yes. Sir, I answer. have one question. Assalamu alaikum. You can ask. I have one small. Yeah. Uh, the no, uh, male and the female is considered as a nominal in no, nominal category. If we make it as a male as one and female as two, can we make it as a ordinal? No. Actually, or we have to make... actually, one and two is the assigned code. You can say zero and one. You can say three and four. Ordinal is considered when there is natural order. We say man, male and female, there is no natural order. No one is superior to another. If we say mild, moderate, sphere, illiterate, primary education, middle education, secondary education, there is an order. One is superior to another. When there is superiority or inferiority from the categories, then it is ordinal, otherwise it's normal. Or if we add, give one to male, two to female, these are the only voting. They are not ordered. Doctor, uh, uh, I think uh, hold the questions and we will ask the question at the end of this. There are so many other questions, uh, Dr. Asif. Uh, please, uh, all the participants okay. are requested to write down the question and we will ask the question at the end. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, we have uh, studied so far presentation of data. Now I was talking about the data, behavior of the data. What behavior of the data is actually, you see this image and try to understand what it is. I made it roughly on uh, using paint tool. If you have this data in the, in the rectangle or in the square box, you have calculated the mean. Mean is from the middle of the data. Let's suppose this is mean. Collective mean of the deviation. Why we need to calculate? Actually see if this is mean, how these data are deviated from the mean deviated from the mean, deviated from the mean. In short, if we calculate the mean age as 23, 23 is the mean, you see first subject or first patient, how old he is from 23. This, is, this distance is called deviation. In statistics, in statistics, distance is always considered positive in physics. So, so this distance, this distance is mandatory to study so that we can see how an individual is far from its mean. It's, it is called dispersion. It is called spread. It is called deviation. So measure of dispersion is necessary when we use mean or median. Mean is the central or the representative value along with this central and representative value, we should know how our data is scattered from its mean. This standardization of this scatterness is called standard deviation that you usually use. So there are two types of dispersion. One is absolute dispersion, like range, standard deviation, variance. Another is 
see the variability of data or to compare the variability of data with same unit. Another is relative measure. Coefficient of variation and Z scores are used. It is used when we need to compare the variability when the units are different. For example, have you ever considered if you watch cricket, there is one player of uh, the year among batter, among ballers, among all-rounders, there is only one. Batter is making the score, baller is throwing the ball, how they both can be compared. Their unit is different. In health sciences, if you want to reliability, want to reliability of your data, if one data is being collected on one scale and other data is being collected on another scale, now the units are different. Which data is more reliable? Because you cannot compare on the basis of absolute measure or standard deviation or mean. Because they have different units for this, you may need to use coefficient of variation. In, in simple words, dispersion is used to see the variability of individual from their mean. And it, it also tells about the spread of the data. Less the spread, the data is very good. As the spread is more and more and more data is not reliable. If you want to see which data is more reliable on the basis of two different units, you can use the absolute uh, relative measure. And among relative measure, you can see coefficient of variation. Why this is important? If you have two data, first data, second data. Just think, just imagine which data is good. Both have mean as seven. Both have seven mean for data, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, mean is seven. For data 12, 8, 1, mean is seven. If the mean is seven, on which data you will rely, you have to see the units. If the units are same, use standard deviation. If the units are different, use coefficient of variation. Here the units are same because it is age, age of children in year. The first data had standard deviation as 5.56. And the second data had Sorry, the second data had standard deviation 5.56 and first data had standard deviation as 3.12. Less, uh, less the standard deviation data is reliable. So see, for first data, the standard deviation was less as compared to the second data. Even you can see the data was less, 12, 8, and 1. There were only three observations. But for the first data, there were more observations. Both data have the same mean. So, for consideration of the reliability of data, you have to see the standard deviation. The difference between maximum and minimum value is called range. For example, this data is given. The range can be calculated as the maximum value was 78 and the minimum value was 8. 70 is the range. Where we use range? When there is huge data set, huge data set, you just need to see what is the minimum and maximum point and what is the difference between maximum and minimum point see this maximum uh, the difference between maximum and minimum point is too much it means there is huge variability of the data it is it is usually considered when you just see the variability of the data so this is actually the behavior of data skewness what i was telling there uh, at the time of uh, studying histogram. The middle one is ideal histogram. Data is spread for, uh, data is equally spread for its mean, around its mean. Here, the data is not equally spread. Here, the data is not equally spread. If the right tail is prolonged, it is positive skewed. Negative. Left tail is prolonged, negative skewed. In normally distributed data, when both tails are equally distributed, you can say its mean, median, and mode are almost same. If mean, median, and mode are not same, it is skewed. If mean is greater, here you can see mean is greater than the median, than the mode, it is positive skewed. 
here you can see mean is lesser than the median than the mode it is negative skewed consider this is for example 0 to 100 let's suppose this is 0 to 100, 0 to 10 okay see mean is less than median than mode so this is also 0 to 10 for positive skewed mean is at larger side at 10 side so mean is greater than the median both are greater than the mode if you ever see if you ever see this relation this sequence you can say your data is proper but statistically you need to check the normality of data there are two things seeing the data checking the data one thing is to you see and say oh this data is not okay then if there is any doubt you need to check the normality of data how to check normality of data there are two tests available in spss one is called Smirnoff test, other is Shapiro Wilkes test. Shapiro Wilkes test is widely used, considered more reliable, or most widely used method to test the normality of the data. Normality test can be conducted in SPSS using the command, given command. Note if your p value is greater than 0 0.05, then data is normal. If p value is less than 0 0.05 or equal to 0 0.05, data is not normal. So, can you check the normality of gender? No, because gender is categorical data. Can you check the normality of blood groups? No, blood groups are the categorical data. Can you check the type of uh, or severity of the pain? No, severity of pain is an ordinal data. We can check the normality of data where we can calculate the mean and standard deviation. And we can only calculate mean and standard deviation for quantitative data. You see, all these three distributions are normally distributed, equally distributed from its mean. They are equally distributed from its mean. But the this one is ideal. Here, the kurtosis value is zero. Kurtosis actually tell the peakedness of data, how the data is sharply increasing or decreasing. This data is highly peaked and this is flat. If you consider which data has the more variability from these three distributions, this one, this is more, uh, the data is more spread in this distribution. The data is less spread in this distribution. The data is ideally spread in this distribution. So when you want to see if your data is normal, what's the status of its spread, you can use photosis. For SP, go to SPSS, frequency, statistics, and here are the dispersion. And uh, di, uh, di, for, for dispersion, standard deviation, variance, you can select all these. And for kurtosis, you can, and skewness, you can select these options. So this is very simple. If you go to SPSS, only in the single window, you can calculate the descriptive statistics, summary measures, and the dispersion and the distribution. Very important. Step to analyze the quantitative data. Check the outlier using box plot. Check the normality of data using Kolmogorov, Smirnov, or Spiro Wilkes. If the data is normal, present your data as mean and standard deviation. Please consider if your data is normal, present your data mean and standard deviation. If your data is not normal, do not use mean, do not use standard deviation. For non-normal data, use median and interquartile range. Interquartile range is actually the difference between third and first quartile. I think all the things are clear. If you say, I can uh, give an overview, uh, data was of two types, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative data had two types, discrete and continuous. Continuous that can contain each and every possible decimal between two numbers discrete in which the quantitative data comes in jump form qualitative and quantitative data can be measured using nominal ordinal interval and ratio pie chart bar chart can be used for categorical data and bar chart used for in, uh, interval data or discrete data histogram is used for continuous data to check the normality Scatter plot is used, uh, used for the quantitative data when we need to see the relationship between independent and dependent variable. 
box plot is used for outlier checking and pp and qq plot is used for normality one way and two way table can be made for categorical or grouped data for quantitative data you need to make calculate mean when the data is normal you need to calculate the standard deviation as dispersion when the data is normal you may need to calculate the median when the data is non normal and along with median you can use interquartile range so here is short exercise gestational age is a type of which data weeks in gestational age is given in weeks 37.2 37.3 37 week and 5 days 37 week and 1 uh, day so it can be presented in each and every possible way between two number so it's a continuous data is parity continuous or discrete data when you ask how many time she had the pregnancy for parity uh, i'm talking about the parity it will be 1 2 3 or 4 there will be no 2.3 2.5 so it is a discrete data to present hcv status positive or negative with type of graph you prefer you only need to you only need to present your hcv positive or negative pie chart is suitable you are asked to report prevalence of tuberculosis in your area which measure you will use percentage proportion because i am talking about the prevalence prevalence is presented in form of percentage in form of proportion proportion is a percentage you need to check the normality of data which graph you will use pp plot qq plot or just to see the or get the idea i can use histogram for uh, for data with extreme observation which measure of tendency or location we will use because data has extreme observation outlier observation i will use median which measure is not affected by outlier median is not affected by outlier to check the spread of data which dispersion of data can be used it can be used uh, standard deviation can be used for median and if the units are different we can use coefficient of variation coefficient of variation is used when data have different units in positive skewed data mean is uh, uh, like i told mean is greater than median and both are greater than mean which measure of dispersion is used with median for with median interquartile range is used as dispersion which measure is used to ski uh, peak tense of data cortosis is used in quality of life among diabetes what is independent dependent variable quality of life is dependent on diabetes mellitus scatter plot is used to see the relationship between two quantitative data so it was all about descriptive bio statistics and inshallah in uh, future in next session we will learn about hypothesis testing and selection of appropriate test here is a take home message good is not good when best is possible so always put your best to serve the humanity and make your weakness your power as you are created in best way to so put your best to explore the world and nature thank you very much if you have any question you can write in the chat box thank you thank you sir great session okay thank very you very nice. much yes okay now let's start uh, dr mubashir question and answer session yes sir you can use the chat or they can our scholars can unmute their mic and ask directly if Okay. but i think first we should complete first this question, from the chat uh, uh, the first question is from dr najaf masood sir how to make groups in continuous data i mean in pre term age we enter ages in continuous form then how to make early moderate and late pre term category uh, there are some established Uh, given cut off values for example preterm is uh, preterm birth is labeled when uh, the uh, baby is born before 37 week and same way you can find the cut off value the standards are given using those standard you can categorize your data you cannot make yourself standards are given like hb level for anemia hb level is 11.5 for pregnant female and the different cut off value given for male and pediatric population okay another question is uh, please give a, a okay what is it is from professor ikbal hadad 
what is difference between parametric and non parametric a uh, parametric mean when the assumptions of some statistical test are made one of the assumption is data should be normal if data is normal and other assumptions are okay you will use parametric test and non parametric test free of the distribution no need to check the normality if the data is non normal or data is not normal you will go for the non parametric test inshallah we will talk about non parametric test next thank time. you dr rehana is asking what is the difference between percentage and proportion both are same thing okay and uh, yeah another doctor asked the doctor tawseef in what aspect sps is better than the power p n and excel okay SPSS actually uh, has uh, defined tools. In Excel, you have to write the formulas. In SPSS, you do not need to write the formula or give the script. All the things are built in, and you can do from A to Z, from primary to secondary, from basic to advanced statistical analysis. Okay, Doctor uh, Subhajya uh, Ram, uh, excellent presentation and question from the Maharin. can an ordinal very interesting question dr asif can an ordinal data be converted to the quantitative data no uh, from from quantitative data we can cannot, make the categories cannot, cannot be. from categories we cannot make the quantity okay dr asif i can ask myself because for the information i rather yes, yes, can we convert uh, excel in uh, uh, sps yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. We can import the data from Excel to SPSS. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, uh, Doctor Mashouk, you have raised the hand. Doctor Mashouk, you can unmute and ask the question. Doctor Mashouk, Dasti is from uh, Dadu, and I. Ah, uh, Sanaikum, sir. Ah, uh, जी सर मेरा वो क्वेश्चन क्लियर हो गया था मेरा स्क्यू डेटा के हवाले से क्वेश्चन था कि नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव की इम्पोर्टेंस क्या है वो बाद में स्लाइड एक आ गई थी जिसमें डॉक्टर आसिफ ने उस पर कमेंट किया था ओके एनी अदर क्वेश्चन एनी अदर क्वेश्चन सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन सर यस 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 यू कैन आस्क सर आई वांटेड टू नो वेदर दिस जेड स्कोर इज इट लाइक इट्स अ मेजर गॉड फ्रॉम द कॉलमोग्राफ्स मी नोटिस्ड एक्चुअली जी इज यूज्ड फॉर मेनी स्टैटिस्टिक्स for all non parametric statistics if you use spss it is given by z this z is basically the standard to to standardize the data yes this is standard equation this is not that z this is z score and whenever yes, you convert whenever you convert your data into z score it will become normal ha huh, sir that means subha, uh, when we do uh, link, dr subha i have shared a link uh, Uh, i think your most of the question will be at, the, at that uh, presentation any of okay, if you have any other question sir. dr subha jayaram uh, that's what sir i just wanted to know whether this z score is it related to the kolmogorov smirnov uh, uh, test i just wanted to know that i told it is not the kolmogorov yes 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 okay uh, another question is that uh, regarding standard deviation i have a small question you can ask dr shamshad doni from yes doctor i want to ask uh, when we use plus 1 standard deviation plus 2 standard deviation and uh, plus or minus uh, yes. 3 shamshad, standard can you introduce deviation? yourself when yes doctor i mean i am uh, from uh, saudi arabia working in majma university as a physiologist thank you dr asif can you explain it yes uh, one standard deviation two standard deviation three standard deviation is used when you do not have the original data if someone present data in form of mean and standard deviation you just make these simple calculation and you will get the percentage specific percentage of the data if you make mean plus standard deviation and mean minus standard deviation there is a two values for example the answer is 45 and 55 you can say the people from this mean and standard deviation is calculated there is 68% proportion who lie between these two ranges if you make mean plus minus three standard deviation and the range is 10 to 70 you can say 99% people 
had the data from 10 to 7. So in the absence of original data, you can get an idea about the range of the data from the population. This is also called empirical rule. And this is only be used for normal data. We mostly use it for non-normal data that uh, get wrong. Okay, thank you, Dr. Asif. One more question from Dr. Abdur Rahman. Explain test of significance for data analysis. Uh, inshallah, in next session, test of yes, significance. Yes, we are in the next session. Another yes. question is, when we use uh, 1ST, 2ST, 3ST, plus, minus, so on. Uh, I have told sir. It is the same which I asked. Sir. Okay, okay, okay. This was from you? Yes, yes, sir. The same which I was asking. Yes, well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and now I think if uh, uh, Dr. Mahreen has raised the hand. Dr. Mahreen, Zahra, can you introduce yourself and ask the question? Uh, sir, I am Dr. Mahreen Zahra, Assistant Professor uh, Pediatric Surgery. I just wanted to ask that there are some ways to convert ordinal data into uh, that, uh, uh, quantitative data. No, like, you uh, like uh, the, uh, I, I want to explain my uh, question. That like severity of pain, you said you can calculate by mild, moderate, and severe pain. And uh, if we use pain scoring, then uh, all uh, the data is converted into quantitative because in scoring, we calculate it like uh, the, this patient has score two, pain score two, this has four, this has three, like this. So does it, it become uh, 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 an, a quantitative data? Uh, Once Dr. you use pain uh, Dr. Marine, a for example, Dr. Marine, for example, you have asked the patient how much pain you have. Patient has told, for example, sphere. Sphere pain is considered when pain was greater than eight, eight, nine, and ten. Yes. He told you sphere, but he didn't tell it was eight, it was nine, or it was ten. Okay. If you yourself can assign a number, it will be wrong. And there is always loss of information when we take grouped data instead of quantitative data. That is, uh, that's why it is always told to take quantitative data, then make the categories. For example, if a patient come to you and you label it as anemia, and you labeled anemic later, you wanted to know about its HB level, you cannot, you cannot see the exact value at which level it was anemic. So you cannot convert your ordinal data to quantitative data. It's not good data. Okay, okay, thank you. Dr. Sadia Yasin, can you introduce? Uh, Dr. Sadia, can you introduce? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Sir, I'm working as a medical educationist at Rashid Latif Medical College. And so the session uh, is uh, quite enlightening and really uh, enjoyed this session. Uh, sir, kindly please repeat uh, that you told about correlation and association. Okay. When we can use, which type of data, uh, for which type of data we can use correlation and for which type of data we uh, can use association. For example, so you, for example, you want to see the relationship between maternal body mass index and neonatal birth weight. Body mass index is quantitative data. Birth weight is also quantitative data. If you want to make relationship between two quantitative data, it is relationship. And if you want to say obese, non-obese mother versus low birth weight and normal birth weight, now you have converted it into category at categories, it will be association. For quantitative, it's a correlation. For categorical, it's association. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Abdurrahman Hadi, can you ask the question? Dr. Abdurrahman Hadi, you can unmute and ask the question. Uh, Dr. Abdurrahman asked, which program would be prefer rather than SPSS for free sources? Easier and easier. Uh, Dr. Dr. Baha Aldin, there are many softwares like R, like Python, like Excel, but always you always need to learn them. And for me, SPS is much easier to learn. And if it is not available, you can go for R, but you have to learn the R program first. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if there is no question, can we? Uh, conclude today's session. Yeah, thank you so much for the great session. Over to you, Dr. Uh, Mubashir Iftakhar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Asif. 
Hanif Sahib yeah. and Professor Sh Mulazim Hussain Bukhari Sahib. So we yes. will conclude today's session. Please mark your attendance and then end the session in your attendance. And hopefully we will be sending you a short assessment for this assignment for this session as well. Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend ahead. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.